Hello and welcome to this final episode of Hermitcraft Season 9. It's going to be a little bit different from my usual episodes. I've got some of my favourite moments from the season playing on screen. And I'm just going to ramble over the top. So firstly, let's get some facts out of the way. Uh, Hermitcraft Season 9 has just finished. There will be a Hermitcraft Season 10 coming in the new year. And I absolutely intend on being a key part of that series. I'm going to be there from day one. I already have some fun ideas being put together for what I want to achieve. And I genuinely can't wait to be part of it. And I, I can't wait to actually start out on a fresh world again with all of my hermit friends. <laughs> uh, now I'm sure there will be a lot of like admin-esque questions about things like the world downloads and other bits like that. And I'm going to put all of those down in the comment section because if I try and do it now, I will inevitably mess it up and then have to do a correcting comment anyway. So I might as well just skip a step and put it all down in the comment. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about uh, Season 9. Season 9 was an incredible season for the Hermits and Hermitcraft as a whole. There was some of the largest community events ever in the history of Hermitcraft. It had probably the biggest variety of stories and different play styles across the board. It feels like everyone has just really found their grooves and there's just so much creativity coming out of all the players. There was a massive crossover, of course. There's Decked Out by Tango. Can't help but mention that. Have to mention that one. There's been Prank Wars. There's been giant industrial builds there's been chaos there's been stupidity there's been tons of silliness it's been mad it's been pretty mad and there's a lot of things that i'm absolutely gutted i missed out on and also there's a lot of things i absolutely loved being a part of now look okay we can't really talk about what happened with me for hermitcraft season 9 without really giving the context of season 8 so season 8 was probably one of the most high octane like action dense seasons ever um but it did get criticized by some people for ending quite abruptly which i think is fair enough we wanted to avoid the slow down of the late stages of the season where motivation kind of gradually fades and peters out and instead we wanted to end when the energy was really high and like end on a high and when people are still super invested but i think this break from the norm did throw some people off uh, where I do think we did mess up was we had a huge break between Hermitcraft Season 8 and Season 9. And that's simply because the reason we did Season 8 so short is because we wanted to launch Season 9 for the when the massive update released. And then, unfortunately, Mojang decided to split that update into two separate updates. And yeah, the the, the first half of the update wasn't really that strong. So then we thought, okay... Well, we'll still end Season 8 when we intended to, but then we'll launch Season 9 when the second part comes out. And then they just kept pushing that part further and further back. So then we ended up just launching Season 9 anyway, and it was in a bit of a no-man's land. Which obviously is no one's fault. You know, th these things happen. There's so many moving parts. But for me personally, it definitely took the wind out of my sails a little bit. And I remember when the season launched... I logged in on day one and then actually didn't join for the second day, which never really happens with me. But, you know, I was a little bit concerned, but I brushed it off. Then I made episode two, which was my epic failure of a slime farm, which is genuinely hilarious. And it's a project that I look upon incredibly fondly, not just because it completely revolutionized slime farming accidentally, but also it's just, it's cool. It was, it was weird. Um, but then when it came to making episode three, I just, I couldn't do it. I had built up what a Hermitcraft episode had to be so high from season eight. And I had so much desire to constantly make better and better things that the lack of motivation to play and the pressure to do something good combined in a perfect storm to create just crippling inaction i would just sit at my computer not able to log on writing out ideas and then scribbling them out and just getting super stressed and you've all heard this before um i took a month off i returned for a few weeks and then just completely dipped out i like well, yeah at, the, at that time i was like pretty certain that i was quitting youtube and i wasn't going to come back um and then as the months ticked on, you know, I battled with purpose, I battled with life direction for a while. Then me and my girlfriend decided to cycle from our house in England to Rome in Italy. And I decided, as I was crossing the Alps, this is all very poetic, <laughs> uh, that actually I would return to making YouTube videos once I got back from the trip. Hermitcraft still scared me a bit though, so I eased myself into making redstone videos for a few months before rejoining in early 2023, and over a year since the start of the season, um, which is bold. Uh, now, there's no doubt the Hermits were really, really welcoming. It was so nice to be back online, to rejoin the silliness, to be back working collaboratively again. 
building up the vault was really cool, revisiting that project, you know, creating another diamond button, finding that I actually was the richest hermit. There were loads of things that were great. Really, really happy with the videos. I will say it did feel like I was a bit of a stranger on my own server though, if I'm gonna be real. That's just what happens when you take a year off. Nothing felt familiar. There were loads of jokes I didn't understand and entire storylines I had just absolutely no idea of. I was also completely out of sync with everyone else in terms of progress, obviously, and at very different stages of the game. But I was, again, I was still just very happy to be there though, and I was just happy to be in the right headspace to be making those videos. And I really wanted to make something cool of my return, so I started building up my mega base, and immediately I knew it was just pants. I hated it, but I wasn't sure what to do, so I avoided it, then exploded it with Scar, which was hilarious. And I, you know, I was doing a third fresh start of the season, which, you know, if you're going to do one fresh start, you might as well do two, and then you can do three. You can do as many as you like. But I, I will say I did feel a little bit guilty that I kept getting people hyped, only to change directions or give up entirely. Um, so that played on my mind a little bit. But I had a cool design in mind, people were psyched for it, and I was ready to start building. It just so happened that I started the new base at the genesis of an impromptu and absolutely enormous prank war with some of the biggest and most incredible pranks Hermitcraft has ever seen. <laughs> and this was far more exciting than building my base. And I wanted to devote all of my time to working on these incredible ideas and these incredible builds for that. And I'm so glad that I did because it led to some of my favorite times on Hermitcraft ever. I think I will laugh about the ridiculousness of that bot battle and of course the perimeter cover up until I'm like 60 years old. <laughs> but with that said, you know, uh, like it did mean that my base was left mainly unworked on for a few months and it was definitely like not a priority for me when it came to making Hermitcraft videos. And by the time I returned to it, I wasn't exactly that fired up about it anymore. You know, it's like coming back to a drawing that you started three months ago and then you, you go back to it. It's just, it's not quite as exciting as when you first had the idea and wanted to bring it into reality um and to be honest with you the viewers weren't that fussed about it either um each episode i worked on it i just saw the engagement drop which i never normally care about i never look at that sort of stuff but it can it coincided with my personal dropping engagement as well there's no point in me doing something i'm not enjoying for people that aren't enjoying it either and that coupled with the end date of the season being set uh, around mid-december and then decked out taking off and giant new game-changing redstone updates arriving which meant i was doing tons of those videos and then a few once in a lifetime projects arriving in my inbox that I can't talk about. And then Secret Life and some personal trips. Season 9 base building just didn't fit that well into what I was doing. Uh, I did a community post recently talking about how I've retired as a YouTuber. I make things I want to make. I don't care about statistics or growing a huge following. I'm just doing my own thing and you can come along for the ride if you fancy it. But I can't help but feel... A little bit guilty that I haven't wrapped things up neatly for season 9 and that the season as a whole has been such a mess from me. Um, the good thing is, me making a mess has probably given a good number of you who previously predominantly maybe used to watch me uh, a, a nudge in the direction of other hermits who are so creative. So funny, so incredible at what they do, that it's probably expanded your content horizons massively. And that makes me very, very happy. And I'm so proud of my fellow Hermits for turning Season 9 into another ridiculous, ridiculous season. It's been really, really cool to have played a very small part in it. And, and I'm so, yeah, I'm so pleased to still be a part of this community. And I, I just think... You guys are awesome. I have so much admiration for everyone. Um, so, thanks for sticking with me. Really grateful, and I don't take it for granted at all, and I really hope I can make Season 10 something special for all of us. Cool. I don't know if you could hear that gecko in the background there. I'm in the Philippines right now. You can definitely hear the cockerels, but the gecko was definitely something new. <laughs>